Welcome, friends, to Season 4, Episode 24. It's been brought to my attention that uh, my numbering system may, in fact, be what some have considered to be non-linear. Others have said non-consecutive. Several more have pointed out that I may have skipped a number maybe once or twice. All I can say is... Did you is, duplicate any? No. Oh, well then that's That only that's happened on okay. that, that happened on another show. Because if you skipped show. one and then you ended up duplicating one, then you're still okay, right? <laughs> uh where was I? Oh, I had a whole spiel lined up. Uh Pondo, can you ready the crickets? We're gonna need those. We're gonna need those bad boys. Alright. I said ready the crickets. I didn't say deploy them yet. He has those oh, things on a hair trigger. <laughs> I was going to say, hold, hold fire. <laughs> they were ready disturbingly quickly. <laughs> hold fire. I, I had no idea if they would actually come through at the moment, so I pressed the button just to make sure. I know, it works. Radisaurus rules are not in effect. We're doing regular interest because I got some announcements. Now, if you are at, at home, you might notice this video is slightly shorter than normal. That's because we started late. I was running behind, and right at 7.30, I said, I've got about 50 minutes worth of work left, and there's only 30 minutes till the start of the show. It's time for me to, to, to you know, get on the Discord and let everybody know. And as soon as I hopped on, Rad was like, I'm going to need 30 minutes. And I was like, yes, the buck stops <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, Rad was ready one minute before I was, so the buck stops with me. <laughs> oh yeah, we did have just chat episodes. Listen, that's true. All right, Rachel Messer just rated us. Prepare for it to get really messy. Okay, uh, for those watching live, Sid word refers to the guy right here. That's that's Sid Alpha. That's who they're talking about. Hello. Rachel Messer, Sid, I don't, can we do a joint intro? I've never tried one of these before. Rachel Messer, voice actress, right? Twitch.tv slash Rachel Messer? Twitch.tv slash Rachel Messer, YouTube.com slash Rachel Messer Gaming. She is a voice actress. She has done, she has played in roles such as Akashic Record, A Bastard Magic, uh, 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 Black Clover, uh, goblin slayer and all sorts of she's been in dozens of animes uh what's the one with the the bat the, sh the ship azure girls? lane, azure lane. Azure Star Wars. I'm see i'm oh. so terrible and forgetful with names it's god awful and she's also been in over 350 video games uh which includes borderlands 3 and smite and paladins and all sorts of games it's crazy I, yes, Rachel, I am trying. I, I, she knows how terrible I am with names. It's embarrassing. Uh, she's a fantastic person. She is a friend of mine, so welcome her, and welcome to everyone from Rachel's chat. I'm sure you probably know who I am by now. I would hope so. No, I'm not stoned. Come on. I'm sure you know who I am by now as Too well. Too tired to be oh. stoned. <laughs> <laughs> right with the dad jokes already. Okay. Uh, Sid. I know we've talked about Rachel Messer before, but have we ever mentioned that she also teaches voice acting and has voice acting boot camps on a regular basis that one can join? She does, and she announces those classes regularly on her Twitter account. So you can follow her at Twitter, at Rachel Messer on Twitter, so you can check out those. And there is a, a web link that I cannot put into chat for Twitter, Rachel <laughs> because Messer, I'm Twitter. not a mod here. That's true. Um, I was also thinking for her website. But... Oh, I'll go get that website. I just, I, I just know what the Twitter was. Sunnybluestudios.com. Right. I've website. been there before. You're so cool. See, oddly enough, I do remember that, but I cannot remember half the names of the things on on the spot. It's terrible. Cool. That's cool. Uh, I feel like this is a really successful yeah. joint intro. Oh yeah. If you want to find Rachel Messer's YouTube channel, you can go to SusieLouNews.com. You want well. Sid, did you set that up? Is that <laughs> yes, a website that you created that will read her? Okay. Right. Uh, it's just an yeah, it, it, it's actually a mm -hmm. it's an SSL in encrypted HTTPS link, SusieLouNews.com that redirects to Rachel Messer's YouTube channel. 
Sid is using words that I don't understand. <laughs> uh, we've lost Pondo. Uh oh. Everything okay, Connor? Didn't didn't lose him, losing metaphorically. Back there. Yes, everything's fine. Or literally, like I I don't have object permanence. Once he goes beyond that black curtain, I forget <laughs> who he is. <laughs> he ceases to exist. I open tabletop must be on my laptop for you. so that my computer won't crash, and he's getting me a mouse to use on my laptop so I can move my piece. Okay, I understand now. He made for a good joke though. But he put me in charge of the crickets if you still need them. Uh, I will delay. The crickets are on delay. I'm still working my way through intro. Well, listen, we introduced Rachel Messer before we introduced anybody else. I haven't even done my intro yet. All right. Let me just say, Cotton, that you're being way more responsible with the power of crickets than I would be. Okay? <laughs> I feel the like chat you is would... correct. I am trying to deflect from the fact that I will at some point in time over the course of the next month-ish have to dress up as a cat you know, i mean why is uh -oh. that bad i've dressed up as a cat several times well, i also train. have to sing cats Ooh, which so. which song from cats uh yet to be determined listen regular cats or the butthole version of cats listen the version let me cats. let me give you a side <laughs> dodge <laughs> what if instead you sang everybody wants to be a cat from aristocats no but it's specifically from cats so see, no, I that, see. That aristocats has the word cats in it yeah but it's not from cats okay it right. contains cats but okay. it's not from cats i tried i listen i tried really look the nature of human languages is that i tried to twist it as much as i could hmm. uh you know no there's there's no dodging out of this one i'm gonna have to do it let me segue into my intro the nature of human language is a problem that i've had this week uh, if you're following on Discord, you'll know that several shows are undergoing some cast changes as a result of uh, my inability to communicate in human language with others and others' inability to communicate in human language with me. Uh, as a result, New Game Plus is mostly canceled. We're going to have one final episode next Wednesday. And Rogue Trader is going to take a week off to get our new cast member hazed so that we can properly get him on the show. Other hazed that, or will he be hazing us? That's, I that's the question. Don't, like, I don't solid, know what he's going to play yet. That's solid the thing. question. Even the way that Henley plays, I would have expected him to be the Rogue Trader, but we already have a Rogue Trader. Mm -hmm. I think... I would like to see Henley as a pilot. Hmm. Yeah, we have had Henley as a pilot before. I know, That's true, and he he's good, and at it. It, and it was glorious. Yes, I I remember. <laughs> Sid in the cat suit worn in Underworld. No, I'm good. I don't need to imagine that. That's <laughs> that's a thing that I can I bleach scrub from my mind forever. Yeah, that, that's no, gone. No, now. no one, no, no one, no one, no one reasonable or sane wants to see that kind of cat suit. On ah, there. you know, Sid, you say that, but if there's one thing I've learned about the internet and humanity, this is true. Reasonable is... and sane in the internet don't are not things that go hand in hand. So, can't gouge out your mind's eye. I will, sometimes I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I in my intros? Um, all right, Panda's not here. I'm going to skip the crickets thing. We'll just pause the crickets. It's been a week. It's been a, a full week. Uh, I'm gathering camping supplies and storing them in a box. And once everything has arrived, I'm going to take the box out and I'm going to go camping, I guess, once, just to make sure it all works. And then I'm still as good as I was 18 years ago in Boy Scouts, which I almost certainly won't be. But you know what? You don't get better by not trying. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I'll be going camping cheating style. I'll actually have an air mattress. That's not cheating. That's just plain smart. Yeah, I was going to say, that doesn't sound like cheating. I've got a cot that I'm putting a sleeping bag on, so. Oh no, you know, it's been, it's been a week. Oh, so I mentioned last time uh, that I wrote something down as the show was wrapping up and it's my new secret operation for this episode, specifically the first turn. 
uh, this episode subtext. The the title is still whatever the title is, but the subtitle is "Everything Shoots Pondo in Turn One." That's the operation I'm carrying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because as as we were doing outros, I was like, "Huh, actually, everything could see Pondo right now." <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a little concerned about I that. I think Pondo's going to be alarmed when he comes. No, he's good. He'll be fine. Oh my god, Pondo exists! <clears throat> All right, Sid, so let's hop over to you. What you got? What are you doing? Am I going to yes. broadcast from the campsite? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing idea, though, and I wish that it's he... your boy AP Gaming Real. It's <laughs> yeah, your boy. <laughs> I, my hair is now made of a weave of mosquitoes. I have hey, a sunburn from twenty minutes of air exposure. It's me. <laughs> it's your boy. <laughs> AP, AP Camping Real. No, <laughs> oh, no, there has to be a phonetically rhyming AP Camping something that we can throw in there. Real, except for you spell it like the fishing reel. Ooh, right? We can still do fish. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Big brain. That actually, listen, that's fucking galaxy brain. <laughs> 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 I went from no to hmm, hmm on that one. Sit out. I do, I do have a generator now. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, hello everyone. I am Sid Alpha, or as many of you will know, the dude that will at some point in time in the very near future be wearing some form of cat costume and singing probably terribly. I do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sid Alpha. I actually had a video go up earlier today talking about Naughty Dog and The Last of Us 2 and a little bit of uh, shenanigans there. And uh, I recently basically just said fuck off to Twitter. So... I'm just posting video announcements over there, and otherwise, I'm I'm really not engaging with Twitter at all because people be crazy. That's true. I haven't really engaged with Twitter in some time. My last big post was just saying the word anime, and I got like 17 likes, and I was like, "What the fuck? <laughs> I don't understand weebs. how Twitter works. I don't. Weebs. It wasn't weebs though. That's the thing. Doesn't matter." I I'm trying to sound like if they're not weebs, they're closet weebs. Trying to sound like cool and weebs. apathetic or anything, but I legitimately, occasionally forget that Twitter exists until some. Uh, that's probably like, for the best. They, they post a Twitter thing, and I'm like, oh yeah, Twitter. I actually have that on my phone. Like, I completely. Twitter is so far off my radar. I mean, you'd be amazed to how how far down my stress level has gone since I just don't fucking check Twitter for anything anymore. <laughs> I believe it, man. Because like even even though it's been like a day, day two day two days, I I, it. yeah, it's like I'll I'll still go in and, and and just do a quick spot check for anyone trying to send me something like in in relation to a game or some game news or something like that, and uh, of course my video announcements and stuff will still I'll still go out there. But that's it. I don't uh, look at anything else. I feel like Twitter is a giant platform that is just a comment section. Mm -hmm. which is the worst place you can go on any yep. website ever is to the comments. And I feel like that's all Twitter is. It's, it's just the comments. It's weaponized nuclear trash. And uh, so like I figured that, that out very early on. And I was like, unless I, unless I'm in a, a mood and I just want to look at and feel sad about humanity, I don't, <laughs> I don't read comments and stuff. Uh, so Twitter's just, it's not a place for me. It's not good for my mental health. Now, I'm actually going to be running some tests here to find out uh, whether or not post even posting my video notifications to Twitter make any kind of difference at all. And if they don't, then you just abandon it. Just abandon it. <laughs> it's the rise of Sid Alpha Instagram and TikTok. Nope, I'm just going to be on my Discord. That's just that's pretty much Sid it. moonwalking to various. <laughs> very ska music to inform you that he's about oh, to drop God, a new video ska. in six oh. hours <laughs> listen ever since sid dunked on ska music on this show i've started listening to it again <laughs> it's the second time i've mentioned ska today <laughs> but, but listen this is the best part yeah it, not like the very next week I came home from work and my kids were sitting watching TV as they often do. They had finished their homeschool stuff uh, from, you know, being at home or whatever. 
and they were having some of their screen time for the day and they were watching Scooby-Doo, like the newer Scooby-Doo that's on, I guess it's on Netflix. I don't even know what platform it's on. It doesn't matter. And the, it was the end of an episode. It may have been one of the short movies. Irrelevant. The point is there was a band like Battle of the Band face off, not not unlike say like from Scott Pilgrim. I don't know if you remember that scene where they kind of like shoot their band powers at each other, right? Yeah. Well, I watched and, Josie and the Pussycats back in the and day. And the villains of this episode of Scooby Doo was a ska band. <laughs> and you and, and as a person who listened to ska in the '90s, you could absolutely tell that the people who wrote this episode were 100% people who listened to ska because all the, they were drawing like the people dancing correctly. And the whole subplot was this band had been in a plane and they were going to make it big, and then their plane went down like in the woods. And when they came out of the woods, everyone had forgotten about ska music. And it like, it's 15 minutes of fame were over. And everybody's like, that's trash. No one wants to listen to that. So it turned them into evil Scooby-Doo villains. And they tried to find a way to like, brainwash people with ska music. I'm like, oh my God, if Sid wrote an episode of Scooby-Doo, this is what it would be. That's, that's what it would be. Yeah. It, it was amazing. I was uh, like, I couldn't even believe it. My wife didn't believe me when I told her. I was like, I just watched an episode <laughs> of Scooby-Doo where this villain was a ska band. Wow. Anyway, that's my story about the Scooby Doo and Scott. You got anything else, Sid? Uh no, that's it. Uh day day job is day jobbing and uh YouTube. Be YouTube and every time I post a video, it's like a magic button to cause people to go away. Which th <laughs> thanks to the YouTube algorithm. Yeah. I'm at to, oh no, I'm not I'm not I'm not even joking. I look at my I am at plus ten subscribers for the past twenty eight days. That's how terrible it is. Wow, I'm at plus twelve subscribers for the last twenty eight days, course, and this I, I, is I, you we're talking about. So I pi I pissed off a lot of people on Twitter, and I pissed off a lot of people on uh, the video before the one that went up today, and uh, because of that, it's been a a a, a minor exodus. So okay, an exodus. Uh, Look on the bright side. A movement of the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what is you did the plus supposed to be? Plus ten sounds like a good thing to me, but apparently not it's for bad. a channel of Sid size. <laughs> not for a channel of one hundred and thirteen thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so what what should the plus be? Uh, About twenty times that add, minimum. Add two zeros to that. Yeah. And would be uh, okay. All right, I got gotcha. you. That'd be like mediocre. Can I use? Can I use that? That doesn't feel like a good segue. Let's try it. Ugh. All right. Yeah. Have the crickets ready, Pondo. <laughs> you know, speaking of two zeros, let's talk to Pondo the Mad. Yeah. No. It just do it. Just do it. Uh, it you're not giving me opportunity to do it because you keep talking. <laughs> now the moment's gone. It, it passed. It's only for a moment now. The moment's gone, just like dust <laughs> in the wind. Not exactly. even the crickets want anything to do with that. <laughs> uh, Pondo, you didn't hear, but uh, this episode's subtitle is Operation Shoot Pondo with Everything in Turn One. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, I made that you, decision you during outros that. last week. I mean, I'm, I'm primed for the shooting with everything. What do you got, Pondo? What's what's I think spinning you're about your to mouth get this shot week? By everything. It... <laughs> uh, I haven't really been doing much. I've been working on the office, getting everything set up, so I got pretty much. You've been helping me with paint dilemmas. Oh uh, yes. I'll mention that at the end of this, the, the, my paint dilemma. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to go get that paint tomorrow. That paint. It's all about that yes. paint. No trouble. Uh, I did do that. <laughs> I did make a comment about a, another product that's a micropicidal. That uh, if you pour that in you, you would kill everything and keep kill anything that's in you, including internal organs and. <laughs> I like what? What are you doing, man? <laughs> that's that's some hefty ass. Uh... What, well, what? that's that's any paint though. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, this paint's okay. <laughs> Put this paint in. Uh. You. Well, it, it would do it much better, more efficient rate than regular latex paint. Uh, because, it, like I said, it does kill the bacteria in you. 
good and bad. And possibly your organs. All bad. Okay, let's move yeah, on. Who would be consuming... No, no. I, no who I, like want, just, I don't want to know no, the answer Just keep that. going. Let's I, do like something else. Just, I like how you stopped yourself because you, yep. <laughs> you realized there were more answers to the question than you wanted. Same people want to huff lacquer thinner? Yeah. I forgot that that was a thing. <laughs> you forgot that huffing lacquer thinner was a thing. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm sad. <laughs> It's bad because my two coworkers every because I had to use lacquer thinner to clean up a, a bench that had a whole bunch of oil based shit on it. So I used it to clean that up and I was like, man, that smells. And the coworkers were like, man, that smells good. <laughs> well then. <laughs> it's alarming. <laughs> Hopefully these are not your superiors. Actually, maybe they, they, they both are. They That's the issue. That way you can rise up just a, just a little bit faster in the ranks there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cotton just remember their cheese balls right next to her desk. Oh, cheese balls. I'm jealous. I want some cheese balls. It's, it's her secret, not so secret stash. <laughs> you okay, AP? <laughs> uh, just look, I needed these intros. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you're a little in pain from them. Uh, life is paid. <laughs> There he yeah, is. Yeah, that's right. I went right <laughs> back to Princess Bride. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I've, I've so mostly today was spent uh, mowing the yard where during a hot as hell day. It was terrible. Uh, and the second part was mostly me cleaning up my office and getting things set up, like the consoles and whatnot. Because I do want to eventually get back to recording and or streaming or both. I want you to get back to recording and or streaming or both. Yeah. New new cricket noises. Developing new master mixes of crickets. So right right now my side of the room is currently a wiry mess that I'll eventually have to go back through and manage. Even though eventually I'll change everything. I have to undo the management and then have to redo it. However, other than the wires, this is the first time that his side of the room is cleaner than mine. Wow. It's been a while since Cotton stunk on Pondo. Uh, no, I mean, it's, I was just, I was praising him. It's very clean over there, other than the wire. Okay. There's a little bit of dunking, but it is true. Praising, Fine. okay. That's what they call it. All right. That is praising. It's, it's, it's the major burn, but the unknown burn. Yeah. Well, speaking of someone who I'd like to praise on more regularly, Radosaurus. What? Who lied to you and told you I was praiseworthy? <laughs> hey, chat. It's your boy, well, Radosaurus. Wow. <laughs> no, can't, wait. Be okay. can't wait for Radosaurus' Instagram posts. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a whole post just for comments about <laughs> Animal Crossing on the Switch. It's a separate account. Of course. Of course. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done an intro. I mean, I, I've had a, I don't know. As good a week as we can have, um, as one could have with the world being on fire and whatnot. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm doing okay. My dog is sick, which I'm kind of bummed out about that. But, um, you know, I'm going to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, what else? I don't have a lot planned this weekend coming up, which is my favorite kind of weekend to have. Um, there is a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico that will probably be swinging... Um, my general direction, although it's not currently projected to hit Houston, uh, it's still uh, a week out, so a lot could change. But it is expected to be fairly weak. I think the largest threat that it's going to present is probably a lot of rainfall, which is historically bad for my city. But uh, we have fingers crossed. It's not a lot. It's not. It's not like there's a lot I can do to control the weather yet. So just kind of got to take it as it comes. Um, work's going. You know, like work and stuff and. Family's all healthy. I hope everybody else is staying healthy. I know that there are so many catastrophes going on at any one given time. It's easy to forget that, you know, 
you need to, to be safe and maintain your social distance and all that kind of stuff. Don't forget that there's a pandemic going on. Um, a lot of people around where I have lived uh, seem to be behaving as if it is over. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't uh, endorse that. If I mean, you do you, of course. But uh, remember that in doing you, uh, you affect those around you. So please be responsible. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't mean to be preachy. I had a pretty run-of-the-mill week, I guess. Um, you know, all considering. So, yeah. I, I I met up with a coworker today on site that I hadn't seen since uh, quarantine started. And they didn't recognize me for like the first 10 minutes because of my beard, which felt good. I was like, yeah, that's how you know a beard is good. When people don't know who you are anymore. You look like a totally different person. Uh, so, yeah. That's it, really. I'm excited to play some Battletech tonight. I feel like there was more I was going to say, but I always forget right before I start talking. I know. I had the crickets ready, but then I just, you know. I've had fun talking to Arthur this week about... Uh, what part of our discussions was it fun? Sounds, it sounds... I don't like the phrase bug out because it sounds... Oh. It makes you sound like... I don't know, you're a crazy person, or at least people look at me like I'm a crazy person when I say look, it. Look, man, when all this started with the coronavirus, I was like, it's going to happen. We're going to go on lockdown. People were like, yeah. you're crazy, Arthur. Don't self-quarantine. I was like, I'm doing it. And then a week later, they were like, <laughs> self-quarantine, get yourself a mask. And I was like, well, listen, who's crazy all... now? <laughs> yeah. It's still me. <laughs> If I can, if I could take a minute to explain something from my personal experience, Please do. Um, wh which is limited, but uh, hopefully useful to someone out there. Um, for 99% of people, I do not recommend that you get on the internet and you start Googling and trying to develop a bug out plan, a plan where you will leave your home in uh, the, the case or instance of uh, dangerous social upheaval or uh, anything like that or your house being on fire your house on fire you should probably get out of it i would endorse that behavior but i would instead recommend <laughs> what a bold sting <laughs> yeah so i know hot takes hot <laughs> takes uh i would instead recommend um a bug in plan okay do some research on that because chances are unless things get really extreme um, leaving your home and going and being safer somewhere else is a pretty low probability of success. You are much more likely and much more capable of being safe, secured, and prepared uh, by hunkering down in your own home and having preparedness strategies focused around that as opposed to having strategies where you dive out into the great unknown of the world. I know a lot of people, myself included, I used to think this way, that I could, you know, if the shit hit the fan or whatever, I could go out into the woods and just live. And I, I can, not forever. I'm not that good. I'm not like Survivor Man or anything like that. But I have the supplies and the experience and the knowledge to go spend a couple weeks in the woods and probably be okay. I would live. I wouldn't thrive, but I would live. Uh, but the thing is, when, you know, in this hypothetical scenario, uh, where riots reach my neighborhood or whatever, I feel like I have to leave. I have a family. I have a wife. I have children. I have parents who live, you know, on the other side of town. I have um, my parent-in-laws that live 15 minutes from me. You don't exist in a vacuum um, when stuff like this happens. You have a network around you of people. And, you know, just because I can go out in the woods and camp and live for two weeks doesn't mean I'm going to take my family with me on that uh, journey. So be realistic when you're thinking about preparedness. Uh, I speak largely from a place of someone who lives in a city who has in the last decade or so had routinely had mandatory evacuations for hurricanes and storms and stuff. Uh, I'm here to tell you that if the shit hits the fan, you're not getting in a car and driving anywhere. If you think you are, you're a little bit crazy. Okay. It takes five hours to drive from Houston to Dallas when the hurricane came through and everybody decided at the same time they were going to leave, you get in your car and you make it about six miles in about 17 hours and your car runs out of gas and all of the gas stations are out of gas because every motherfucker in the city has gone to the gas station and got gas. So there's no gas in your car. There's no gas in your gas station. So wherever your, gar your car stopped, 
is now where you are until you walk somewhere. And you're surrounded with everybody else. I mean, ta- imagine a highway 12 lanes wide, full of cars, out of gas. Okay, so if, if your plan is really, I'm going to jump in a car and drive away when things get bad, understand everybody else has that same plan and everybody else is going to do the same thing. And if you live in a city of any significant size, like if you live rurally in a small town, sure, maybe that's a more viable option for you. But if you live in an urban area, I think you should think real hard about being prepared in your house for you know pandemic lockdown or unsafe streets or whatever. Consider your home your castle, and it's not a very good castle, so you're going to have to do whatever you can to prepare that space to give you the best chance of staying safe and secure for any extended amount of time. Uh, you're going to do better there than you are somewhere else if you don't have a place to go and a way to get there that isn't in a car on a road. I, that, that's probably a big tangent, and some of you are probably looking at me like, all right, no, we tonight, tonight we have learned that Rad is a crazy prepper, and he, he watches all those shows and has all that stuff. And that, maybe that's true a little bit, but um, – you know, I have two small human beings that I'm responsible for bringing to adulthood as functional individuals. So to me, there's no there's there's no limit to the preparedness and and caution that I can have towards achieving that goal. Um, so if it's just you, you're a single nerd somewhere watching Twitch, or or you're a family person or whatever, whoever you are. Um, Maybe you don't live a place that has hurricanes. Maybe you don't live a place that has earthquakes. Maybe you don't live a place that has tornadoes or floods or whatever. Maybe you live in a small town and you're you're totally (laughs) safe all the time. And if so, that's awesome. (laughs) Send me a message after this and let me know what the cost of living is there so that maybe I can look into moving there. That's not as good as you think. (laughs) You have to give up all your culinary delights. If like a lot of Americans, you're looking at what's going on in the world and you're, you're concerned and you're trying to find some peace of mind, uh, you know, look into ways where you can make yourself safe and secure. And I don't mean going to the grocery store and buying 80 packs of toilet paper, right? <laughs> look, look into some actual expert advice about how to be just, just general disaster preparedness. I sound like a crazy person, but I've literally had three mandatory evacuation, evacuations from the fourth largest city in the country in the last 15 years of my life. So it's something that oh, my family's literally gone through on multiple occasions and I've done it with a newborn and I've done it with a toddler and it's not fun. And it's something that I was not prepared for when it happened. So I've taken a lot of steps and anytime I get a chance to talk to somebody about it, I talk to you about it. If, if you want a peace of mind, there's no shame. Don't worry about people thinking that you're crazy to just have a plan. It doesn't, doesn't have to be an in-depth plan. You don't need a fucking bunker under your house with eight years worth of supplies. But just, just something. Just have something. Just even if you never use it, you'll it'll you'll feel good about it. You'll feel good having it. All right. I've, so the punchline: This I've gone on long enough. My. <laughs> if I, you have questions, I, I may not be the best person to answer your question, but I can point you in some directions for some resources. So you know, there's that. I guess I can. I'll say that much. Sure. I'm a crazy bunker prepper. And what I've been talking to Rat about is the exact thing he said not to do, which kind is of, mobile, but... how to get out. I Listen, <laughs> I know how to stay in. I know how to stay right. in forever. Uh, the problem is that my mom is old as fuck. And if anything happens, I got to go get her and take her someplace where she's not going to die from diabetes or cancer or disease or coronavirus. And Absolutely. And that's what I'm talking about. We're not all... We don't all have the luxury of taking care of only ourselves. Um, so you need to have, you need to have a plan and, and Arthur's plan is to leave. And I don't think that's a bad plan. Oh no, listen, if I could stay here forever, I would, I would never leave my house. <laughs> I understand. That would, that would be the superiorist choice. If I so could choose dis- never to leave my house again, that might be the way that I live my life. So I do feel like, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Arthur. But I feel like Arthur had some misconceptions about some of the things that he was looking to do. Correct. That's um, absolutely true. And I just want to, you know, talk talk to somebody who you think might know. Um, I'm just glad Rad enjoyed himself <laughs> laughing at me rather than no, with me. No, it wasn't like that. <laughs> my my joy came from being able to uh, answer questions and clear things up. Wow, and, listen to this and educator. Shed, and shed light on things. 
this teacher here. I will share. I'll, this is my last deal. I'll share with you what I shared with Arthur. If your expectation is that it's like in the movies and you are going to show up to a local military base and they're going to grant you asylum, I would not count on that. Military facilities are secure facilities. And while it does make sense and the logic does follow that in the event of a disaster or a crisis situation, that that would be a good place to bring civilians in and keep them safe. They, because of, because of the assets that they have there and the resources that they have there and the way those facilities are set up is your likelihood of rolling up onto a military gate in a time of crisis and saying, let me in and then waving them, just waving cards of civilians up onto the base is slim to none. So I don't, I don't think you have a bad plan there. I think though that you just need to look into it and you need to make sure you have an in to that facility, which is not impossible. Facilities have uh, volunteer organizations that operate on them all the time. Civilians go in and, in and out of military facilities all the time, but they do so with the proper authorization, the proper paperwork, and the proper parking tags and vehicle tags and all that stuff. So I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that if your plan is to run to the government for help, make sure you understand the steps you need to take for that to be a viable plan. It's not that it will never work. It's just that you need to be knowledgeable about what to expect. Right. If you think you're going to go somewhere in a type of in a time of crisis, on a weekend where you got nothing nothing to do, set an alarm for four o'clock in the morning and wake up and go there and see what it's like when you do that, because it may not be it may not work exactly like you would expect it to, and that would just be under normal circumstances, let alone in a crisis. So that's it. I could go on for far too long and I'd rather play some battle tech than talk about this. But hey, nauseum, whoa, we, so. we can't just skip cotton here. Yeah, do the cotton. No, but intro. my time is over. Sure. I'm, I'm listen, your listen, you're not that old. Your time isn't over yet. I feel I like you got know. another good 20, 30 years in you. Yeah, it's not like you're as old as 20, me. 20, 30 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm trying to be generous. <laughs> Jesus. I know I got some extra miles on me. God damn. It's okay. It could be worse. You could be as old as me. And then that's Jake, true. I could no be like there. four years older. God, what are you said like mid forties? <laughs> Calm down. Mid, mid mid forties. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> Isn't your know. birthday soon? Like next week or something? Uh, f five days from now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Well, how old are you going to be? 41 50 yeah see that's that's Mid in the 40s. middle of 40 to 50 <laughs> no, it's like er, early early 40s <laughs> don't give me that that's a semantic of language and as we've learned today language and i do not <laughs> if communicate you really thought about you would say late 30s uh in my 30s <laughs> you could say you could say post 30s oh post 30s, post -30s. that's a good yeah, one wow yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm post 20s See, now that, then that feels a bit too uh uh feels a bit too much of being in denial though yeah it is a little uh i thought yeah. that's the deal about being in your 40s was going through the midlife crisis no i i'm fucking i <laughs> I weigh less than I did in my late 30s, and I'm hell, a hell of a lot healthier than I was in my late 30s. I've got no complaints. I was going to say, I'm going through my midlife crisis now. It's not good. It's bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. You know who else is doing good? Cottontail. Let's hear from you. It's hot. Okay, maybe you're not doing so I've good. been laying on the couch all day. <laughs> been a little bit grumpy because of the heat. That's good. You can say really mean things to clanners and just be like, uh, what I want to do is they'll bring me, bro. Haha, <laughs> noob, just goss cannon to you, bro. Lol. What'd you one say, two, Sid? One, two, uh, buy cheese balls. It, over there right now. it was like 90 something a day. It okay. sucks. Wow. That's, that's, that's mm. freaking hot. Of course, Rad would say, be like, oh, <laughs> it's sweater weather. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't Burr. do heat. <laughs> If you want no. burr, wait for that negative 20 below windshield that we got <laughs> when Sid was real. down here. That was fun. That was actually, I, that it felt like normal Sid's out temperature t-shirt to me, shorts. Just, just windy. <laughs> you were cold. Let's see. It's I, was, I was a little chilled. It it's 8.33 at night right now, and the heat index is 91. I can see how cold you were. I got tired of looking at you. I made you get a jacket. <laughs>
I warned you when I asked you if you had a coat and you're like, well, I've got a sweater. And I was like, that ain't going to be enough. I had my, wasn't. I, an alpha. I had my jacket. It, it was fine. You had a, like a I tiny mean, I didn't, sweater. I didn't plan, well, I didn't plan on spending so much time in open air. That's the thing. When it's that fucking cold outside. Open you don't air. spend much time outside. <laughs> No, I you agree. Have I to agree go with him. Outside to do things here. Yeah, brief moments. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely yeah, and those believe it's in. Uh, like negative twenty six degree wind chill, it adds up real fast, and the wind just goes through all of it. You got to get a windbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> I already missed the cold Still have weather. that coat too. It's, it's a nice there. coat. That's right. It's right. Those there. are nice coats. Got anything else going on, Cotton? That's it being too hot or in six months it'll be too cold. I complain less about the heat. I mean the cold than the heat. I hate the heat. I hate the heat so much. Some like it hot and some like when the heat is on. I don't like when the heat's on at all. I complain loudly about the heat. It's supposed to be 98 degrees here next Tuesday. But it's been like all week. Oh, Rad. If only you had said something like it's going to be 103, then I could make another song reference. Just keep the, queuing them up all day. The heat index will be in the triple digits. I could I do up, this all day, Rad. I was up on roofs today, too. It was brutal. Uh, I wanted to double down on something you said about driving out of cities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to drive up to Philadelphia today. Uh, there was no gas in any gas station from Doylestown to like 40 minutes south. I don't know what the hell happened in Pennsylvania. It's scary, dude. When why the started... fuck don't they have any goddamn gas? And there's cars everywhere. How who, how are these people powering their cars if every <laughs> gas station is closed? I don't were understand. They, were they Teslas? No. They, trust me. <laughs> I didn't see a single fucking Tesla today. Every single one's a goddamn SUV. Pennsylvanianers, SUVs and trucks everywhere. I'm buying a Ford Escape half the day. I thought, how's that thing still got anything left in it? These motherfuckers been out of gas for so long. I'll agree with Rat though about hunkering down is sometimes better than leaving because we've like, in some situations, like we've stayed in tornado shelters when tornadoes were coming and we've tried to outdrive tornadoes and the shelters seemed a lot safer. To me. I would agree with that because shelters are designed to survive a tornado when a car mm -hmm. is not. Well, Listen, we didn't have a tornado shelter when we tried to outdrive it. We, we, we outdrove it. I see. Everything turned out fine. What was that movie back in the day where the cow the, got stuck I've in the... I've seen the Bill Paxton Twister. classic oh, Twister yeah. enough times Twister. to know yeah. that <laughs> if you don't have a basement, you're fucked. <laughs> With the tractor tire that was yeah. in the trailer but not in the movie? That's why mo <laughs> yeah. most houses around here have basements, but not all of them. Some of them have like the little crawl space like dug into the yard. I love that movie, man. It was one of my favorite movies growing up. All right, Sid. I'm going a, I'm to a dive sideways for you real quick. You want to talk about a scene in the trailer that's not in the movie? Nothing will ever beat the first time that happened to me. The George in the Jungle movie where the toucan was on the airplane using yes. a ticket to ride. That was in the trailer, but it wasn't in the theatrical version of the movie. And I was like, by the end of the movie, I was like, I'm six. Where the fuck is toucan at? Yeah. I thought, like, where, I thought there was going to be a toucan in, in this movie. Like, where is it? Just sitting there. It's like, it's got to be coming up soon. It's got to be coming up soon. <laughs> when I was what, six, I didn't credits, use the word credits, fuck. What? <laughs> Still, I was very disappointed to not have a toucan. <sighs> All right. We ready to move on to the final announcements, announcements, and then get like 10 seconds of shooting Pondo. Finger on the crickets button. What? I'm no, excited. we don't need the crickets anymore. <laughs> we always need the crickets. No, we don't. Wow, sit out. The final thing I have to say, friends. Uh, oh, let me mark this down so that. Talking too soon. Wow. <laughs> I was expecting a longer pause. The final thing I have to say, which is not cricket-based, Pondo. 
is that in an undetermined date, two weeks from now, my studio will be closing for 24 hours for repair and painting because of my mold problem or not mold problem in order to get the depreciation value on my house, something, something, something. I need to take everything apart and move it away from the walls. You may or may not know this, but everything in my fucking studio is up against a goddamn wall so that I have a lot of floor space. So I must now do the opposite. I must delete my floor space and move every, which means unplugging all of the electronic devices. <laughs> and then after it's all done, putting everything back exactly where it was and hope that it still works. So just be aware that in two weeks, a random day will not have an AP Gaming Real Stream. I don't know what it is. I will say on Discord what it is when I know, which is not now because I don't know. President. Are you putting up new drywall? Is that the deal? Or is it? Replace, We're not uh, going to put up new drywall. He's going to put some screws through the drywall here to stabilize it. And then we're going to kill shot it and then paint over it with interactive cream. Kill Which, as you it. might know, is my favorite paint color. Hashtag E4CAAD. It's an okay color. It is the king of pants. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know what your beef with interactive cream is. I'm, you know? I'm just there's there's better tans. Ten years ago, hey, it was voted like as preference. it was voted as the most neutral color for males when painting a house, and I said, you know what, I'll roll with it. You said and ten went, years ago? Yeah, like ten years ago. It was oh, okay. in a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so I went with it. I mean, look, how else are you going to decide colors? You know, you think I know colors? Have you seen me do uh, art? The people inside can help you with colors. Just, just <laughs> watching t 10 years ago, Arthur on the internet going, most neutral male. No, 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 no. Magazine, magazine. I, I physically read it in a book. A book made of paper. Man, that made my eyes water a little bit. Uh, Eric is asking if e it's... E4CAAD. Uh, D, Delta. Delta, just like our most favorite elemental on the show. I just paint everything either OD green or coyote brown. Coyote brown? That's your yeah. okay. Or flat dark earth. It's also a good color. I mean, <sighs> these are very basic military colors. I don't know this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <pretty much> <laughs> so. I imagine that's a big issue with the army. Is like, all right, do we paint this green? Brown or tan? That's not an authorized shade of green. <laughs> gonna need you to repaint that. I was gonna it's say, and the army, they, they probably just go, all right, camo everything. <laughs> Making that camo. Yes, the yes but what camo? There's a lot of different camos. <laughs> that is not There's specific enough. There's a shit ton of sorry. camo. That's. Are right, we going with digital? We're going with like Desert Storm. I, I don't know that anyone uses Desert Storm 30 years later, but okay. Uh, I mean, uh... Oh, wow, don't. Rad's about to dunk on me. Okay. We don't, but other countries use our old desert stuff. Oh, yeah. all right. Okay. Well, I'm not here to talk about other countries. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, Australia. Okay. You know, someone just told no, me just, this week, they were like, I Arthur, that James why, in the chat. why are you so <laughs> focused on America? And I was like, I don't know, because I live here and 58% <laughs> of my audience is American. <laughs> and a handful is like American protectorates like Guam we, and Puerto Rico. We have one Australian. We have got more than way that. more than one Australian. You're, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, Absolutely missed the mark like on that one. Four or five. Yeah. <laughs> there are dozens of us. <clears throat> I'm just trying to weed them out busy so I can see who we got. Spiders. Wow, don't well what's jeez. All right, look. Here, let's get started with the episode. So, um there there's a man. Uh he's he looks kind of like Jonathan Frakes, but not Jonathan Frakes from Riker. Jonathan Frakes from that weird show where they were like the car. Uh, yeah. Oh. What? No, the one where he he told stories and then was like, was it real or wasn't it? I'll oh. tell you at the end of the episode. Oh, oh shit, what was that? Yeah, uh, I don't that remember was what it is. Believe it or not, wasn't it? Was it? I don't know if it was, but you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the man approaches the camera and he goes, "Invaders from beyond the edge of the periphery, 
Wielding mechs haven't been seen before. Double heat sinks, enormous weapons, strange colorations. You might believe that this is a mystery not worth solving. But this is the Comstar Files. And then we could see that this footage was in the way in, in the way that nowadays we'd be like, oh, this was shot in the 90s. Uh, we could see that this footage was like 20 years old and then it grays out and it goes picture in picture and the same guy but now he's 20 years older goes hello my name is Austin Colombo and you may know me as the host of the Comstar Files tonight on the Comstar Files we'll be delving into the real truths of what actually happened behind the Minnesota tribe and then it does the like boo -doo -doo -doo, boo -doo -doo -doo. Comster files will go wah, 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 wah. <laughs> uh, but the new logo says in 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 association with Comstar. <laughs> uh, and as he starts going into like these pre-clan super mechs, he's like, now we know the clans are real. Are they the identity behind the Minnesota tribe? We'll take a look at their trail across the Draconis Combine. Uh, and as that zooms out, we see it's Rapier just like sitting in his bunk. He's got like his phone and he's staring at the ceiling. Uh, he's got a incredibly long sippy straw that has, you know, a heart in it and then a loop de loop. And he is sucking down coffee into his body. <laughs> and he's just like, I'll get to sleep sometime soon. Just anytime soon. Is that the heart to represent the one that you got stolen from by Ronan? Wow, I didn't even think of that. But let's say yes, because that sounds tragic, and I love sadness. Oh, the Jonathan, <laughs> that Jonathan Freak show was beyond belief fact or fiction. Ah, there we go. He's like, is this true? Did this really happen or not? What would it take for you to sleep a night in a graveyard? And I'd be like, I don't know, like a hundred bucks. So that's yeah. the uh that's the second that's the second Egg of gummy bears you know, i don't know you're wrong it was completely made up yeah. it's real i love when people use it as a reaction gif that's my favorite thing yeah. right <laughs> have you seen it's just, this? it's just a super cut of him being like guess again it wasn't real at all <laughs> nope not true you'd be an idiot if you thought that it's just like it's just, no no have you <laughs> seen the thing where he does the the intros and he asks the question of the episode someone did it and they were like if you watch it at half speed he sounds like a drunk at a bar <laughs> with nothing else left to talk about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was pretty funny <laughs> oh my god i went back and watched it like that it's so good he's like how do you feel about bicycles? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and shoot Pondo now. Excellent. I know that's a weird segue. But... Actually, not excellent. You need to miss. What? No, I need to hit every single shot. You need to miss. One by one by one. All right. Isn't so we're shoot? talking stone know. rhino. No. Oh, are we still in the middle Seven. of our combat round? Seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. Fourteen right. X's. Do you? Uh, that should be a medium range for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. With the gas rifle and yeah. the large pulse lasers, I can afford to just go ahead and blast with everything. All right, so uh, blast. Welcome, Phantom Roll Booth. Welcome to. I am intrigued. Almost three years of using Tabletop Simulator to play this, and now it looks better than it ever did. Certainly better than when we started. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to show mech sheets on stream and we had some convoluted method. Oh boy, thank God for this community. <laughs> this show <laughs> would not exist without it. All right, three, four for the jump jet mastery and jumping, five, six for medium range, seven, eight. So it's eight, eight for the Goss rifle, six, six for large pulse laser. I'm also trees. And to recap that, for everyone, Those are not real trees. Oh, We're then why are they up... here? Because they look good. <laughs> And to recap for everyone, we're here in the middle of combat that we're picking up from last round, where uh, basically the majority of last episode was tactical maneuvering. No, mm -hmm. I there was there was a lot of shooting last episode. Surprisingly, oh, there was, there was a oh the first of shooting right. Oh, at the trust ends, me, the but... first part of the episode <laughs> did involve a lot of tactical maneuvering and a lot of artillery fire. There was a lot of artillery fire. 
I feel bad because All that's right. probably going to compromise the positions of our artillery okay. units and they're probably- So these trees aren't actually trees. They're just there. That's correct. They're wasteland tiles, not tree tiles. That's, that's why it's this that's, wasteland. That's disappointing. That probably would have affected his movement. That, that would have affected my movement if I had known this was actually, actually tree lines. Uh, so let's just take a look it's at okay. the remaining mechs here. We, we lost a Nova, bravely, bravely lost a Nova. Uh, uh, we got another Nova who's ready to go. I'm sure you died in a fire. You died in a fire. I'm about to. Yeah, I'm about to make that happen. We got this Nova cat over here. They're mostly pristine. Over he here. was on the wrong end of an Ultra AC-20 is what happened. You were on the wrong end. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> I might. Season five, it's just gonna be all Tracy twenties all the way down. <laughs> all right, well, all you're gonna be facing is Hopman that have been converted to carry two AC twenties. I'm gonna call them like I'm gonna call them King Crab Deluxe. Okay. All right, so we got this basically untouched Mad Cat that's missing some ammo. Cotton's Marauder spent the whole combat jumping around doing some crazy stuff, and oh, now whoa. she's like, I want to duel. What? It's not basically untouched. It is untouched. I mean, you're missing ammo. Two That's rounds. not really being Look, touched. Sid, you, <laughs> it lose, a mech loses 25% of its value once you take it out the mech bay. I mean, everybody knows this. That's yeah, fair. but it's a <laughs> mad cat, so it doesn't lose its value. In fact, it gains value. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it also imparts The only thing it loses is mechs. heat. <laughs> you know, speaking of losing value, let's look at this king crab that's missing about half of its torso armor and some arm armor as well. Quite a bit of arm armor, as a matter of fact. And some leg armor, too. Like, you're missing armor from... Uh... Nobody cares about leg armor, though. Wow. That's true. No, Every Jenner in existence sacrificed. just cried out in terror. <laughs> How many mechs have we seen fall down from leg hits? Actually, oh, wow, you're right. I am missing a lot of armor. <laughs> 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 All right, so now that we know where we're at, we're shooting a like, get behind me for gosses at, uh, at this avatar. Are you just shooting the goss at me? Uh, no, I'm doing 8866. I'm just saying, okay, I'm so starting shoot, with the okay. I'm, I'm just making All right, sure. Yeah. All right, so just to be clear, it's Goss, Goss, Large Pulse, Large Pulse. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. You sure? I mean, I feel I like would. your way of having it would be to just not have me shoot it at all. All right, well, that's a miss. <sighs> this is why I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> that's a miss, too. All right, now we're doing six sixes. That's also a miss. There we oh, go. Let's finally I'm got gonna something. make your reroll. That wait, where are you hitting? Right arm. Swear to God, if it's a head again. <laughs> this is a four. Right arm. Forward arm. Right arm. Forward arm. There's no way that's right arm. It's impossible. Uh, no, it's forward. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll take. Oh, that. I got you, guy. Yeah. So you're gonna take what, like ten or twelve ten. damage to your right arm? Okay. Yeah. Just ten. All right. Ten. I can check my heat. Uh, 20 plus uh, what did I jump? Three spaces? Yeah, that sounds right. All right, so I build. You build 22 of heat. What? That doesn't sound right. Goss builds one heat each. Yes, but you're forgetting the jump heat. Yeah, but you said 20. Yeah, 20, and then I said jump, and then I added Goss. It's 25. Oh, okay. Fair enough. All right, Pondo. Don't worry. Ooh, ciao. All right, who's shooting next? Now, I don't have my thing here, but let's go ahead and do it because you guys are going to be bullying this dude for the whole rest of his existence. We do have a shutdown mech on the field. There were some concerns last week uh, from Commander Rush about automatically failing a fallover check. However, under the Mech Warrior Destiny system, I chose to automatically succeed on it given that That's these true. these chuckleheads had given me some plot points that I could use. They gave me a little bit of that razzle-dazzle. Let me get some juice from the squeeze. What other weird terms can I use? Is there like a mafia turn I can use here? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I can't think of one. You all may take your turns. Is this the beginning of the combat? I'm confused. Oh, beginning sorry. of the combat round. We, last time we ended on movement. Oh, you right, placed right. your gotcha, artillery, gotcha. and now we're shooting. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yep, we parted halfway through. Okay, so Rad, would you like to fire first, or would you like me to fire first? 
Uh, go ahead, I guess. I don't, I, th it didn't. Okay. All right. I'm still confused, but that's fine. I trust that this is correct. correct. Yes. Go ahead, Sid. Okay. The two of you just head. listen. The two, last three. episode ended with the two of you going, "I'm just gonna stand still. We're gonna totally fuck up this Blackhawk." And then you were like, "Bro, high five But then you did a Top Gun style. You did the down hook, and I was like, "Oh shit! Did they just down hook that? The double high five Sounds right. Yeah. Well, let's see. He shut down. I'm starting in the base of two. He's in short range for everything except my small laser, which is medium range. And there is a, what, minus four for him being shut yeah, down? Yeah, it's minus four for being a moment. So I just need to not roll snake eyes on everything, and I'm going to alpha strike. Hey, if you do, you can re-roll those. That's true. For free, because you keep rolling snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because I managed to rack up enough uh, snake eyes that I got the, the badge. And the real uh, thing so is that's, it took you a while to do so. Uh, yeah, I know. It, it did take a surprisingly long period of time. All right, we've got, so we've got a UAC-20. We've got three medium pulse lasers and an ER small. Let's see if we can, we're going to fire with, uh, uh, ba -ba. I'm going to go with the UAC-20 first and see if we, hopefully we can hit with both. And then uh, three medium pulses and then the ER small. Where's my bottle of alcohol? All right, so that's eight on the cluster oh, two. Oh that's God. two hits. Two well, hits. All right. They both hit. So 20 <laughs> on your CT. Yep. That is minus five internal. Got a crit? Uh, no crit. And we'll hit the second location. Second location is your left arm for 20. Left arm for 20. Oh, oh, sorry. That's, uh, I guess I misunderstood. I thought they were both going to the same place. No. All right, so I saw 15 armor. Uh, left arm. Wait, do they hit? Because it's a cluster shot, right? So they get Yeah, no, arms. each cluster, I think, goes to a different place. You think you are yes, correct they, in the way that you're doing they it. They yep. both hit, but it's different yep. spots. You were correct. It would okay. be brutal if it hit the same spot. Well, shoot. That's a shame that didn't go internal because that would have uh, crit twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Medium pulse number one. Fuck. Thank which, you. wow, that, uh, that's a center torso shot. Yeah, it is. No crit, though. What's that, seven? Um, we're looking at seven. Seven damage. Uh, armor from the wrong mech. I am so... Oh, I have okay. good news for you, Sid, and I have bad news for me. You actually well, I did penetrate that left oh, arm. Oh, I did. So that would be two crits on the left arm. That didn't sound right. Yeah, it was eleven on the die on the crit. Oh, so that would be, that I was would be thinking two. maybe zero crits. What do you think? Can we negotiate? Uh, no, Meet me halfway. I'm, th I'm thinking. Okay, well, uh, three. <laughs> we just blow it right off. All right, one point five roundup. I don't, I, I don't know if that's how negotiation works. <laughs> All right, I lost the near medium laser. Good, and I also lost a near medium laser. Apparently, there are worse okay. things. You got like ten have. more of those. All right, so then okay. you hit me in the center torso again with a what you call them? Yeah, for seven more, no crit on that one. Okay, well that works for me because that's internal. All right, so at this point, the Blackhawk's falling over. I'll wait for you to finish out your shooting, and then I'll do the fall okay. damage. So the next medium pulse will hit in your left leg for seven. Uh, uh, uh. And by the way, this thing restarts at the end of its turn, assuming that it's not dead. And the next medium pulse goes into your left arm for seven and crits two more times. Well, the left arm is gone. So now I lose all of the medium laser. And then we've got our small laser, which hits in your left torso. You hit me with the small laser from that far? Yeah, it's medium range. Plans X5. Uh, typically five. So that's five damage. This is what I get for letting you heathens have <laughs> non-inner sphere technology. It's finally come back to haunt me. This one shot. <laughs> Sorry. Where is it hitting it from? It's the left torso for five. Okay. 
That's you didn't think it was haunt haunting you when you double tapped that other Nova with the Ultra 20? Yeah. <laughs> I don't no, think that's it's fun. finally coming back to haunt you. I think it's done been haunting no, you. No, no, it's the ER. Listen, the ER small is when it became real for me, okay? <laughs> it started to hurt. <laughs> after, after using clan technology gets you for three seasons, having to eat that really hurt. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, he's going to fall over. Just for those yeah. at home, I memorize the page number for falling damage because I use it <laughs> all the time. It's page 68. And the beautiful part is because I'm running a clan mech with dual heat sinks, I actually built no heat. You I'm in Clan double heat sinks because they're. Alright, so he turns consuming. like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to need one of those. I fell down. I can't get up markers. Sid, your 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 sheet pains me. I I know it does. I know it does. <laughs> For some reason, it it didn't line everything up properly. Yeah, it's 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 just. And all your over jump the place. jets are in random spots. <laughs> <laughs> well, the jump jets were just shoved in there. I was like, where can I fit these in? <laughs> yeah, I can tell because you have like uh, two jump jets on one side. One jump jet on the other, the one in the center, and then you just have yeah, a random jump jet on the right leg. I, I think there was something with the, uh, the 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 generator that it shifted them for some reason. Um, oh, for the record, I'd like to state that I'm using the ammo strictly in my right torso. Sure. First. Every time the Mad Cat jumps, it starts to like roll to one side and kind of flail its <laughs> arms a little bit like a chicken before it lands back. I mean, I just imagine doing barrels essentially as it's right. flying through. It like an lands... out of control firework. It's like... <laughs> it lands and penetrates its center torso with a double crit. Oh I my like to god! Imagine that was the only way Baron could actually fit the figure out how to just put the jump jets in on the thing. Three five. <laughs> yeah. This is gyro. All right. Well, if I take oh, another no. gyro hit, that's basically it for this guy. It falls before I get to shoot it. Three six. Yeah. I mean, technically, it doesn't fall until it's another gyro. All right, that's it. Okay, it's dead. It's not dead, but it also can't stand up, and it doesn't have enough arms to force its torso up. So it is functionally. I think you can still shoot with the arm, though. All right, blow its arm off. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna keep this thing shut down. <laughs> Don't worry about it. The guy inside give just... up and just stab himself. <sighs> Listen, we call here just still tapping on the Zilbrigan button. We call it Sirkai Reed around here. You can't shoot from prone with the missing arm. That's what I thought. Thank you for backing me up on that, Grim Dark James, because I did it That's before in season two, and everyone was like, "You can't do that!" And I was like, "Okay, I will never I forget this." His other his other weapons were on the other arm, so he's for all intents and purposes out of the fight, even though he's not destroyed. Correct. I'm okay with that. Rad is very sad now. He was looking forward to getting in on this. I'm sorry, Red. I didn't no, know that. No, it's fine. I'm just going to have to torso twist and shoot Cotton instead, I, I guess. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. He was like, I'm sorry, Cotton. I have to keep my heat up. I can't not shoot somebody. I mean, <laughs> I didn't know that I was capable of one shotting a medium mech. I, <laughs> no, well, you. <laughs> surprise, Welcome surprise. to Clan Technology. Just when it's a minus four to hit him, it's like all guaranteed. I mean, you, you can still. Me. You can still. <laughs> You can still pound the Nova Cat. Can I see the Nova Cat? Yeah. Well, He's got cover for his legs, okay. but yeah, he absolutely has partial cover from you. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Let's see him. Nine hexes. All right, so uh, this is the Nova Cat Prime, I think. Yes, it is. All right, so he starts at two, and he's got a point of edge. So two, three for walking. Wait, he has edge? Yeah, he's got one point of edge. What a dick. Kill him. Man, <laughs> man a dick. Man, 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 man. What, this is in season three? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Dark James edge? having like 25 points of edge. Five mad cats. Listen, I don't I want to I want to. I want to have five mad cats for me. I mean, I designed that fight for me, and then James was like, I, I could play a bad guy, and I was like, Oh, okay, you can have my precious babies. <laughs> and the cast is like, Why don't you join our side? And I was like, I don't know about this one, guys. We're going up against James and five mad cats. 
Um, it worked out. We won. With the blaze of glory. <laughs> I'm going to fire two ERP PCs and uh, three. Blazers. 30. Are you shooting at? Is it me? Yes, of course it's you. I mean, I told you the name of the episode is Operation Shoot Pawn. Everything shoots Pawn to in turn one. I've been, waiting, I've been waiting a whole seven days just for Operation this Operation Avenge Kenneth Cross. <laughs> Operation <laughs> Kenneth Cross Jr. Sublimely Magnificent Cross Shot Mark Three. Name of the episode. No one, no one knows it, but Kenneth Cross was actually a con. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 24... Uh, Retribution of the cross. All right, so uh, two ER PPCs and two ER large lasers. We'll get a little hat. We're not going to go do Tango. All right, uh, how machine? many hexes away are we? Eight? Nine? Is this Novacat? Which, which Novacat? This one. The cool one. That one? Nine. I think he's nine. All right, so... I counted for him, correctly. It's going to be... Eight, nine, yeah. Medium for both. All right. Two, three for that, uh, four, five for medium range, six, seven for you jump. All right, so PPC, PPC, ER large, ER large. That's seven, <gasps> That's seven, seven, seven. That guy killed. Oh, wait, no, What's I didn't the kill it. skill level? Oh, no, he has a uh, target computer, doesn't he? No, he's got a two, three. Does this count? The other one has a target computer. <laughs> Does that count as a kill for me? Oh, so he's the big boss? What? This guy, Nova Cat Prime is is not the. I mean, are you gonna say the Stone Rhino isn't the big boss? I'm confused. It's, it's <laughs> they the, don't. The... What you? What do you assume that I have to put the best gunner in the biggest mech? <laughs> no. Okay. I... Just, Wait, just... the Nova Cat here is the Star Commander. No, <laughs> so oh. Rhino no, just... is the Star Commander. He's he just the best shooter. Shoot. Yes. Wait, that Nova we just blew up was the Star Commander. Got it. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and shoot now. The Star Commander. Um, what, is that uh, medium mech? Does that classify as a kill for me? I. All right, I'll go double check that. It's on like page 178. That's I mean, gonna you hit. You said Pondo. it was functionally dead. You're that just gonna make Sid spend another turn shooting it. Am I right towards the <laughs> I will. I... <laughs> Destroyed enemy target crippled gives you one XP. Uh, so that'd be medium mech destroy would be two XP. So I mean, if you want to destroy them for an extra experience point, that's totally different. In terms of metals, I will curious, count. Right? This a destruction. What you're saying though is I should split my fire and shoot like one medium light for that guy. You want to kill like... secure? Sid will still only get one experience point, but you can farm an experience point by killing him. Yes. Uh, no, I'm not interested in that. Sorry, Pono, you get hit with an ER PPC in your six. So right torso. Uh, uh, yep, uh, be fifteen. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I don't know what your armor profile looks like. Okay, so not it's great. Okay. Not happy. Yeah, it's not. No, not, not happy. But it's it's okay. I can. I'll live. No, maybe. that fucking rollover. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> oh, what it happened? changed from a six to a. Four. It went from a six to a four. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Right I, arm. I appreciate How that. is your arm? How's your arm? Internal. Uh, it would go internal. Oh, it would go internal. That might be worth spending a point of edge. Is he the guy that has edge? Yep. Oh. And that's two crits. What do you got in your right arm? Wait, the stone wow. rhino shot, <laughs> right? Wow, LPX-20! Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm just going to spin an edge to make you re-roll the crit. That's legitimate, but I accept that. Come on, one. That'll Damn hit, it. yeah. Are you spending an edge to make me roll the crit? I'm trying to think which will be more beneficial. I mean, you're about to get hit with two crits. Crits coming at you, left and right, like mad cats. Five mad cats appear out of nowhere from the smoke. Wait, the chance you hit my right arm again. Cats on cats on cats. <laughs> I mean, well, I, and he hit my Nova cat casts mirror there. image. Oh, 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 uh... Wow! <laughs> <laughs> you shoot at a Nova Cat, it disappears in smoke, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. the other Mad Cats all start laughing. Ah ha ha ha! Need a seven to hit me. What? Yeah. See what's hilarious is a client is attempting to call me personally at seven p.m. That is hilarious. They actually, expect me to answer. Just text back, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> new, new phone, who dis? 
<laughs> what are we doing I'm here, Pono? Am I rerolling this or what? Uh, yeah, reroll the crit. Okay. I need an eight. Come on, dice. That's all I'm asking for. Eight. I'll accept the internal. I don't really I want, care. I want that. Want that gun gone. What do we got? Oh no! Oh boy, the whole arm is gone. Ooh. Holy shit! You made Ooh. it worse. Oh, Ooh, this, is oh. this is I'm... revenge. This is revenge. I'll spin so my last edge to make you re-roll the location roll. <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> wow! I I accept. I what accept your, the terms of your bargain. <laughs> oh my god! He's gonna he's it's gonna change the location. Yeah, he's gonna torso. hit you in the torso, and it's gonna blow the torso and the arm off together. It did hit the center torso. Did uh, it penetrate? No. No. no, no. Okay. All right. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> if, it hit, if it had hit him in that right torso and sheared it off, that would have been fucking hilarious. Oh it wouldn't. Have, well, it, it wouldn't have sheared it off. I'd just not be very. I happy gotta be all. honest, like that. To spend one edge and take two from Pondo and still hit him was the best possible outcome of that. Yeah, that really direction. was. It was a good trade for Arthur. Listen, Pondo, it could have worked out better for you. It didn't, but it could have. Yeah. It could have also worked out worse if, if Arthur had gotten another Both of you spent really. your edge wisely. Arthur's dice just came out on top on that one. All right. Yeah, Let's... his his lucked out. Get these. No, nope, that's not oh going to Oh, my hit. God. I should have just had him made a one hit. roll one die, but uh well that right arm you're protecting is gone again. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not. It takes uh oh how takes much 10. damage do these bad guys do? Oh ten. Is it All a large right. laser? It is. ER large. It just takes ten. Alright. I'll get it next time. <laughs> it wouldn't have been gone anyway. You only oh, got one crit. Trust me, trust me, Pondo. I'll get that arm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that arm. You really <laughs> like that arm, which I don't like. It's well, the arm with your big ass weapon that's super scary. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> I I don't want you to have it. I want me to have it. So I don't, don't want you to it. have it. Uh, I'm gonna be scared. Is more, a little bit more afraid of these three other <laughs> next week. Thirty fifty four plus uh, moving for fifty five. So I build five points of heat. Jump to eleven. Which uh, is nothing this turn. No shutdown. All right, look, we're at. Oh, we're, did you take a modifier to hit? No, because I only had a five heat. It just lowered my movement speed. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fair. Now it's at 11. Well, mm -hmm. I had a six. Um, oh, no, I'm just asking you to meet me halfway, right at the borderline. That's where I'm going to stay. Uh, we're at the borderline, and we'll meet you halfway, audience, halfway from eight minutes from now. When we return for the second half. Not in four minutes, though. Yes. In the, in the whole eight minutes, I, not half. You know, I believe, you know, <laughs> you could misinterpret. I understand that you could misinterpret it like that. I concur that that is a possibility. No. Let's meet halfway to halfway and do six yeah. minutes. Halfway from 16 minutes, we'll meet you. You know, I, I, I asked it Alpha to negotiate one time, and now all of a sudden everything's a negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see you then, guys.